my life, I've always had the sense that I was hiding a part of myself that I thought I wasn't supposed to show anyone. I don't know when I stopped setting high goals for myself because I distracted myself by putting all my efforts into helping someone else achieve their goals. And silently, I received my reward. After many years of repeating the same pattern, relationship after relationship, I felt unfulfilled and I didn't have a clue of who I was anymore. Which leads me to this week's podcast, episode 10 of Who Says You Can't? Answer the question, do you know who you are? Really? I am Shell, your podcast host. Oh, and I remember when I was a child in my preteens, dreaming about the things I wanted to learn or accomplish. I would pursue those thoughts and effortlessly they would just manifest easily for me. It was something I just figured that everyone was able to do. School was easy for me. I got great grades without having to study much. Any sport I tried came easily to me. I was popular and had lots of friends and was just happily enjoying life. My mother couldn't have children and she was one of 12 children. So she and my father adopted me at six months of age and then adopted my sister a year and a half later. They were very loving parents and always wanted the best for us. There were two things, however, that they said to me that changed the course of my life forever. We always knew that we were adopted, but my father once innocently told me that my meme, which is my mom's French-Canadian mother, favored me and my sister above all her other grandchildren because she felt sorry for us that we were orphans. Little did he know that years later I realized that I suffered abandonment issues and questioned people's motives for loving me just because of that statement he made. The second incident happened when I was about 14 years old. I accidentally overheard my mom and dad talking about me. They were concerned that I was going to get a big ego because I was so good at everything I tried. They were also concerned that my little sister would feel jealous and envious because I could do certain things just better than her. They also thought that my friends would start to feel the same and be jealous and shun me or be mean to me. They were concerned that I would get hurt. And they were trying to find a way to tell me, well, not to shine my light so brightly (laughs) because it made others feel less than. Little did I know that overhearing that conversation became the number one wrong belief system that I had and changed the course of my life. I could hear the concern, you know, their concern, wondering how they could express this to me. So I decided from that point that I would just try not to shine my light so bright and I would hide my talents a little better so as not to make anyone feel less than. They never did have that talk with me, but it left me scarred for a very long time. At 22 years of age, I met and married a man 12 years older than me. Fast forward 20 years. (laughs) I was beginning my 20th year of marriage with a three-year-old daughter and an 18-year-old opiate-addicted son about to go into court-ordered rehab, who had been a star athlete being looked at for scholarships in either baseball or basketball. My husband was an alcoholic, very controlling, manipulative, jealous, mentally and verbally abusive man, and I was miserable being with him. I wanted to leave him, but then he became ill and had to have emergency intestinal surgery, which required 12 weeks of care before they could reverse the procedure. And during that time, he was more miserable than usual, and I devised what I called my getaway plan. It was the only thing that kept me going, except my little angel daughter. I secretly decided that I would make my getaway while my husband went to the hospital for his second repair surgery. I know, 
This was a cowardly way to leave him. But, you know, I was scared and totally insecure and miserable since for the last 20 years, I allowed him to mold me into being the world's best people pleaser. Do you know what a people pleaser is? Well, let me tell you, I held the award at 45 years old for being the world's best people pleaser. I was the most accommodating wife, accommodating mother, accommodating little league team mom, accommodating homeroom mom, accommodating neighbor, accommodating daughter, accommodating friend, you name it, I made everyone happy everyone else except for the most important person me have you ever felt that way well at about this time my best friend introduced me to her pastor friend at her Pentecostal church she thought talking with him might help me to get some answers I was brought up a strict Catholic got married in the Catholic Church raised our kids Catholic sent our son to eight years in a Catholic school and Then when he graduated, I left the Catholic Church. I hadn't stepped into a church for five years, but I was open and desperate for some spiritual help. So I went to her Pentecostal church and OMG, what a difference than the Catholic Church. But it was here that I started my spiritual journey and I asked the most important questions that were to change my life forever. The profound questions were, who the heck am I? And what the heck is my purpose in life? Have you ever asked yourself a similar question? This began the quest for truth for the next 18 years of my life. It has been a long, dark night of the soul, a hero's journey for me. Had I known that then, I would have probably gone back into my unaware state of deep sleep. (laughs) But my soul would not let me. Well, my escape plan worked flawlessly, and my daughter and I left her father with the intention of reinventing myself for the first time and start a new life while I figured out who the heck I was. I had been the master of disguises, won the award for being the perfect people pleaser for the past 45 years, and I completely lost my own identity. But it was that spark of hope to be free and my faith in God and the burning desire for the truth embedded so deeply in my soul that I had no choice but to keep searching for the answer as to why I felt this gaping hole of unfulfillment in my heart. I made it my mission to find myself. (laughs) Have you ever heard that term? I know it's such a cliche term, but it sums it up perfectly. So I went on my hero's journey all alone and decided that I wasn't going to stop until I figured it out who I was and why I felt this horrible hole of unfulfillment in my heart and the answer as to what my life's purpose was. I felt like this was a huge secret that someone or something was trying to keep from me. Have you ever felt like that? I knew though that the answers I sought were answers that I could only get from going within my own mind and heart and asking God to help me discover the truth. So I did just that. I started by asking the pastor of my new church an aggravating number of questions. (laughs) God bless him. He was so patient with me. I then immersed myself with reading the Bible cover to cover, joined the ladies Bible study group, and soon became the group's leader when the current leader moved away and retired. But I soon found that that hole inside my heart hadn't been filled yet. And there were so many rules and interpretations of the Bible in the church that just didn't sit well with me that I decided to leave the church. I began reading anything spiritual I could get my hands on searching for the answers. 
I felt particularly drawn to the Buddhist and the Hindu teachings. I thought how wonderful it would be to travel to India, to a monastery, to meditate with the monks for months. Maybe then I could find the answers I was looking for quicker. But I realized that that was not the answer and it wasn't very practical either with a three-year-old and besides, what would happen when I came back to a world of chaos? How would I be able to handle that? You know what I mean? So I found this oneness wellness center where they had these oneness healings weekly where teachers place their hands on the crown of your head and transmit light and energy to you with the intention that after some time receiving these healings that you would awaken to your true authentic self and become enlightened. I absolutely loved it and I did this for many months but still felt let down yet again with no real advancement towards enlightenment and still felt the hole in my heart unfulfilled. Have you ever tried different things and felt let down when it didn't help? It left me feeling that maybe something was wrong with me. Was I ever going to feel fulfilled? I realized though that looking for the answers from the outside world was not the answer at all. A few months later, I was officially separated from my husband and my now four-year-old daughter and I moved into a small beach cottage not a hundred feet from the shores of the Gulf of Mexico in Indian Rocks Beach, Florida, and it was paradise. I was working remotely from home and finally started to feel free. Well, sort of. (laughs) My husband decided to join the Pentecostal church I had left and became a converted, born-again pain in my butt. (laughs) No disrespect whatsoever at all to born-again Christians. It's just that he chose to use his new faith to try to guilt, shame, and instill fear in me that God would punish me for breaking the sacred vows of our marriage. So he made it his mission to email me every single day for the next three years with Bible passages, links to marriage repair sites, and he still tried to guilt, shame, and instill fear into me and use his daughter by telling her that she should ask her mom to move back in with him. This was when I really started speaking to God daily, and I remember asking for guidance and knowing that he was guiding me towards reuniting me with my true authentic self. This was the beginning of my second reinvention of myself. I started visioning and daydreaming about the life that I wanted to live. I remember telling God that I really wanted to travel the world, especially Italy, and I wanted a man who was musical and artistic and carefree and adventurer and adventurous like that side of me who felt like being a a gypsy free to do whatever I wanted. I never really got detailed about what exactly I wanted in man, so guess what the universe brought to my doorstep? For the next five years, a real, live, handsome Italian, carefree, gypsy man who was an Italian sous chef and an accomplished guitar musician and an outstanding artist to boot. Sounds great, doesn't it? Just what I asked for, right? (laughs) Wrong. I won't get into the details of what happened because you can read that in my book in the chapter titled Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. Suffice it to say that these next five years showed this squeaky clean, naive little league mom the complete opposite of what my suburban life was, it introduced me to the other side of life. The street smart, smooth talking, drifter, chaotic life of another alcoholic, jealous, manipulative, very verbally abusive, mean drunk. And I allowed him to take me down the rabbit hole 
lost most of my friends from his drunken outbursts, lost my $60,000 a year job, and came to the epiphany that I justified staying with him because, first of all, I fell head over heels in love with him. And I thought that if I loved him enough, I could change him into being the man I saw deep down inside him. But he just couldn't let go of his traumatic past and drowned himself with alcohol. I became the accommodating people pleaser once again and had taken a five-year detour off my spiritual path to freedom. I will say, though, that I did learn some of the most important lessons of my life on who I was and who I was not and how the laws of attraction really work. (laughs) So I left the Italian gypsy with my now 10-year-old daughter and we took what we thought was going to be a three-week summer vacation to visit my sister in California. I had been taking care of my stepmom in her house who had a lot of health issues and was unable to care for herself after my dad passed away a year prior. I really needed a break, so my sister offered us a respite, and my nasty stepbrothers were forced to finally help out their mother after my dad passed and stepped up to the plate while we were in California for three weeks. Well, they informed me after a week that they were going to take over their mother's care and sell her house and left my daughter and I stranded and homeless in California, and they sold all our belongings. Hence the third reinvention of myself at 52 years of age with three weeks of clothing to my name. I tell you this story because these next eight years led me down the path to finally finding myself and realizing that all my life's experiences were what finally taught me who I am and what my purpose in life was. I spent these last 10 years finally on the path to reinventing my life for the third time and still didn't realize I was going to do it again a fourth and a fifth time, but my daughter and I moved in with my gracious sister and I decided to attend college to teach art at 53 years old. Yep, I decided that you're never too old to try something new and I have to tell you it was the best experience because I was open and receptive to learning. Within two years, I started my own painting party business, giving classes like paint night, only way better. I was ready to move into an apartment with my daughter, bought furniture, and made the move to freedom. They had just renovated my apartment, and it was beautiful. Nine days after we moved in, the electric outlet behind my toaster caught fire and burned our apartment and three others to the ground in 45 minutes and we lost everything to our name because I did not have renter's insurance. It was one of the most devastating things that has ever happened. Luckily no one was injured and we were left with the clothes on our backs and a lot of debt from buying a household full of things. The landlord gave us our deposit and one month's rent back and the Salvation Army gave us a week in a hotel and the local police department gave us another week in in the hotel. We found a beautiful house to move into and the community and our friends donated enough furniture and things to help us get started again. Here goes reinvention number four and 56 years old. This incident taught me some great lessons that I don't think I could have learned any other way. It taught me to be humble and grateful that we had our health and safety. And it taught me that humanity was good. People we didn't even know showed us love and support. And more importantly, we lost our attachment to material things. I realized that God in the universe was teaching me some very important lessons on and breaking my wrong beliefs one by one because God has great plans for our reunion as one. So my daughter and I moved in and settled down. A year later, I met a wonderful man who's become my best friend and he moved in with us. 
I was doing well with my business, making a name for myself and still attending college. I was in my first semester at the University of California, Fresno when COVID-19 hit and I lost all my business because I gave parties to 10 or more people and no one could have parties any longer. I didn't know what I was going to do now. I decided that I was really good at writing and my favorite class in college beside my art classes were philosophy and writing. So I decided to follow a path in writing and copywriting and I took a class and became a professional copywriter. But my real passion took shape when I decided to write a book. It was about this time that I became very ill. I had no energy and found out that I was severely anemic. They could not figure out where I was losing blood and after a battery of tests, blood transfusions and iron infusions, eight months later, they discovered it was a 30-year-old hernia I had that was rubbing on my diaphragm and bleeding into my stomach, making me lose blood. Those eight months were very difficult for me because I didn't even have enough energy to stand up in the shower, do dishes, or do anything except sit on the couch. I had no income and was totally relying on my best friend to support me and my daughter. I realized that this was the universe's way of nudging me to go deep within and learn the secret to feeling fulfilled, complete, and in harmony with my inner being, despite my outward circumstances. I spent a lot of time journaling and meditating and asking asking God the deep questions that I had once asked, only this time... I was ready to receive the answers because I had no choice but to surrender to my body and let others take care of me for a change. And so I quieted my mind. And what do you think happened? The answers just started flowing into my brain. I finally realized that all my life's experiences were what I was supposed to share with the world. I decided then to write a book on the one thing that I knew I was really good at and had years of experience doing, reinventing myself. (laughs) So during these eight months that I was couch bound, my inner being flowed the words effortlessly chapter by chapter until my book, Reinventing Your Badass Self, was complete in three months. By the time I finished my book, I felt so spiritually connected peaceful, content, and crystal clear on what my purpose in life was. The ideas kept flowing effortlessly into my mind and I knew darn well that it was not me that was coming up with the words, but my true authentic self, which was my inner being, God, that was flowing through me. It was so easy once I finally gave up control and surrendered. As the ideas flowed, I was inspired to create my own website, which I did with my stimulus money. Then I was inspired to create a course to go along with my book with more stimulus money, which is all about guiding others step by step, revealing how you can easily learn the secrets to playing this game of life without it taking 18 years and tons of frustration until you finally discover it like me and you do it seamlessly and effortlessly. My inner being helped me to uncover my false belief systems one by one, then made me aware of the thoughts and the vibrations that I was emitting that not only stopped me from moving forward, but attracted every negative thing that ever happened to me into my own life. I then learned how the laws of the universe worked and the not-so-secret rules of the game of life that we're all living here on Earth. (laughs) Did you get your handbook when you were born? (laughs) Well, none of us did, but my inner being shared the not-so-secret secrets when I was quiet enough to receive them. Then I became really honest with myself as I realized who 
and what was really in charge of my life and had been for a very long time. And my inner being revealed the reasons why I just couldn't break the toxic cycles of manipulation and control. Remember back in the beginning of my story when I told you what the number one wrong belief system was? Well, it was that belief that I had at 14 years old that I told myself that I was going to hide my true authentic self from the world so as not to make anyone else feel less than. It wasn't until just recently when I was stuck trying to complete the last chapter of the course from my book and to wrap it all together that I I fell into a deep depression. I still felt that unfulfilled hole in my heart. And then the epiphany came. God revealed my childhood memory to me. I remember how I used to feel as a child. I knew who I was. I knew then that God and I were one and everything came effortlessly to me. I knew then that anything I wanted to be, have, or do was easy. I didn't have any money back then and didn't need any for my dreams to come true. I had the answer back then and then I chose to hide it so that I wouldn't make anyone feel less than around me. Then after years of hiding myself, I forgot who I was until this very moment. I realized that I had the answer all along. All I had to do was quiet my mind and listen to my inner voice again. I had finally become my true authentic self again and was free to start the fifth and final reinvention of myself, knowing who I am and what my purpose in life was. I am a visionary coach and an uplifter. I always have been since I was a child. I've always been able to see the big picture of everything. Everything I did and I've helped countless people throughout my life achieve their goals, but I never allowed myself to achieve my own large goals. I realize that I've always had a compassionate and loving heart and wisdom beyond my years and my inner being showed me that sharing my story and creating a course to help others achieve what took me a lifetime to achieve is what I was meant to do. I know I am to share my creativeness through my words and my art. And so I'm going to share with you now the image of God that was revealed to me. I'm now going to reveal that image to you. And I'd like you to keep an open mind and take a good look. Because I know you're going to recognize the face of God just like I do. what God showed me. Take a good, hard look into the mirror, my friends, because the face that you see in the mirror is the face of God.